A doctor's what's the worst state a person has come in? Up in Taos, a man ingested an entire container of aluminum phosphide tablets. A couple tablets are meant to be placed into prairie dog holes and then the moisture that accumulates inside the covered up hole triggers a toxic gas. The man was taken to the air, where he was foaming from the mouth, deemed to be a toxic hazard for the entire hospital, moved to a tent outside, where he then died. I was not there, but my spouse was there. The image of what happened that day to that man and to those around him, is haunting. My cousin works in the air, when we lived together. One day she come home telling me about a patient that tried to cut his own head off with a chainsaw. They had to sew his tongue onto the remaining tissue of his neck because otherwise it would have died off. Obviously he passed out from the pain before he could get to the vital parts of his neck but I still imagine this to be pretty gruesome. Not a doctor, a nurse, a mentally disabled man who was also blind and deaf who lived with relatives. Apparently he lived locked away in the basement and they would just bring him down bread and peanut butter and water to eat and that's all he had eaten for over two years. The police were called when the neighbors saw an emaciated bearded old man crawling around the backyard naked and confused. Guy comes in, leg wounds full of maggots, covered in filth, lice in his hair and beard, emaciated and starving. I remember receiving him from the emergency department trying to calm him down because he couldn't see or hear and was mentally disabled. We washed him and cut his hair and he loused him. Do you know how people always complain about the hospital food? I have never seen a patient more appreciative of getting 3 square meals ever. We would signal to him by taking his hand gently and touching it to his mouth that dinner was in front of him and he would get a look on his face like it was the best thing that ever happened in his life. He always ate every last morsel, and we ended up ordering him double portions until he put on a good 40 pounds. He was with us for about 3 months awaiting placement. He went from 90 pounds to 130 pounds in that time. He was actually very sweet. It makes me sick that his family treated him like that. I'm not sure whatever happened to them but I know there was an investigation. That's 3 disabled person locked in basement stories now boy what the heck boy. EMT here, not a doc, but I've got one that sticks with me. New dialysis patient had just gotten his shunt implanted, wasn't comfortable with it, must have been fussing with it, and it came out. For those that don't know, a dialysis shunt is connected to the brachial artery, just after the aorta, so that it can pump a high volume of blood into the dialysis machine to filter it. With the shunt ripped out though, the heart was basically just pumping blood straight out of the body. So by the time we get there this guy is laying next to his couch, just empty, pale, cool. He almost looked like wax. You would almost think Dracula had gotten to him, if not for the human body's worth of blood on the floor and walls around him. We tried CPR for the family's sake, but his heart had nothing to pump. Paramedic here, grossest call, guy fell down in a hoarder house, wife was too embarrassed to ask for help, so she fed and cleaned him on the floor, patient laid on a dirty tile floor for 2 weeks, his right arm was so swollen and covered in maggots, the arm was as large as a leg, removing parts of his clothes so much tissue was already breaking down all over his body, black and oozing puss. Man spent his last week alive in a nightmare fever dream. I've had more graphic deaths of course but holy crap what a miserable way to die. Paramedic. Six kids, oldest was 12, were allowed by their parents to ride on an ATV on a public road. They ran a stop sign and got hit by an SUV going about 60 miles per hour. Kid 1. Dead. Like deader than dead. Open skull FX exposed grey matter, numerous other fractures, grandparents doing CPR, told them to stop and we left him in the ditch for the police investigation. Kid 2, my only patient from the call that I actively worked as other units took the other four, massive head trauma, brain matter coming from the nose and ears, Lafort fracture, made intubating a B and a half, breathing spontaneously with a pulse so go to work, FX everywhere, blood everywhere. I'll never forget her bright green eyes looking at the roof of the box and she screamed for her mom. Wasn't easy for her to do with all of her top teeth totally separated from the rest of her skull. Died at the hospital. Still remember a lot about the scene a few years later. Date. Time of day. Weather. It was warm for November I remember taking off my jacket. Smell of gasoline. Smell of blood from the dead dead kid. Sounds of screaming. 
but I'll never forget seeing all those kids shoes strewn all over the county road and saying oh frick as I called on scene. Oh and the guy that got hit by a train and lived. That crap was wild. My mom was in a nurse and she said the worst case she ever had to deal with involved a kid whose parents had backed over them in the driveway. Apparently the toddler had the skin of their face completely pulled off where the tire had basically pinched it off of them. The kid survived, but my mom said she'll never forget the screams of that child. Intestines laying next to them in the stretcher. Don't fall off a motorcycle and land on a guardrail. I guess technically people who arrive dead or in cardiac arrest are in worse shape, but this was the most visually terrible. Orthopedic surgery resident. Spend a lot of time in the ED. The dude who was pushing his girlfriend's car off the freeway at night and got hit from behind may have been the worst I've seen recently. Was alive. Legs were annihilated. If there is one thing I've learned it's that when your car breaks down, you will be hit from behind eventually even if you've pulled completely off the road. I once saw a 4 year old girl whose head was run over by her dad's tractor by accident. Her and her mother had went out to give him food during harvest after dark. He was ready to get started and they thought she was in the truck. Unfortunately ran over her head. She was still alive. Field trash tube. Just awful. Certain things you can't unsee. Kid in my 7th grade class had something similar happen. Was doing farm work with a friend. Got off the tractor while it was moving to get something and slipped under the back wheel. Crushed his rib cage lungs and crushed half his skull. He survived but was never the same. Lives out of a wheelchair now. ED night doc here. Worst I ever saw was someone who had tried to commit suicide with a shotgun. Put the gun under their chin and pulled the trigger. Must have flinched at the last moment as they blew off most of their lower jaw and mid face up to the nasal bone. They were conscious and trying to talk when they came in. Med student here. Graduating this year. Had a guy come in who jumped in front of the subway. He was brought in with a weak pulse but a second ambulance came in shortly after and handed me a garbage bag. I thought it was his belongings but when I looked inside, it was the patient's right leg. Apparently his leg was trapped under the train and decision was made to do a baloney amputation in the field. It was taking too long to get the train lifted. According to the train conductor, the patient looked him straight in the eye and jumped in front as the train was pulling in. We also did resuscitative thoracotomy, cracked his ribs for direct access to massage the heart, but he was too far gone and we pronounced him shortly after. Looking the conductor in the eye is cold. If we don't count dead people, I've had a shotgun wound to the elbow, suicide with a corrosive liquid, hand stuck in meat grinder. My dad had a grocery store, guy ground up his arm to the elbow. Eons ago during my residency, a guy came into the air complaining of a venomous snake bite. He was also holding onto the very snake that bit him. The snake was still alive and the guy was holding the snake behind its head. He said he'd always been told to bring the animal that bit you for testing. Good times in the rural south. I mean, I've always been told that too. LOL but I probably would have killed it first. My husband used to work in the year and one of the saddest stories he's ever told me was about a little girl and her mom getting hit by a drunk driver on their way to Disneyland. The little girl was unharmed and still wearing her Minnie Mouse headband but her mom didn't make it. We both couldn't stop crying and I still think about it from time to time. A doc here. Had a nurse come grab me while I was charting. Doc, you need to see room 6 right now. For those of you who don't work in the air, when one of the nurses tells you to go see a patient, you run. I take a few steps towards room 6 and the smell of rotting flesh hit me like a truck. I gagged on the spot, and this is during covid times. I am masked. I peer through the glass doors of room 6, and noticed a well appearing, young female. Because she looked so well, I knew I could spend an extra minute taking a quick detail to find a handful of alcohol swabs that I promptly opened and shoved in my mask to help quench the smell. I walk into the room and find this young 30 yo female with her leg inside a trash bag, sitting next to her parents and family. They do not seem phased by the rancid smell. Meanwhile I hear one of our veteran nurses vomiting in the background. I introduce myself to everyone and ask what brought the young lady to the air, and why her leg was in a trash bag. She starts not by talking, but by simply removing the trash bag, and there I saw it, 
a 6x8 inch necrotic, fungating tumor protruding from her tibia. She then proceeds to explain. It started 6 months ago with a cut that wouldn't heal. It then changed to appear like a fungal skin infection. She googled it, and was confident in the diagnosis. She decided to treat it by starving it of sugar, and going on a sugar free, vegan diet. Eventually she convinced her whole family to do the same in order to help treat the infection. And then about a month prior to her visit today, it was too large and painful to even walk around. So she's been living in her room at home taking virtual online college courses. She added on that she's lost 30 pounds since the infection began siphoning the nutrients away from my body a few months ago. Because it grew developed so slowly, her family and herself were completely acclimated to the smell and didn't notice anything. By this point in the conversation, I heard another nurse vomit. I then sat down and delivered the bad news that this was not a fungal infection and likely advanced cancer, that we would be admitting her to the hospital for further workup and surgical resection. I followed up on her inpatient testing the next week, innumerable metastatic tumors to both her lungs. I never saw the biopsy results but my guess is melanoma versus squamous cell. Poor girl is probably dead by now if she didn't hit the lottery with immunotherapy for metastatic melanoma. Not a doctor but I used to work for the county coroner, nights and weekends. Got a call one night, real late like 2am, it was cold and foggy as heck, call was to the country, middle of nowhere, I live in a big gag area, tons of farms and dairies and orchards, get to the site to see emergency services everywhere, sheriffs, fire engines, paramedics, and a giant crane, apparently a guy who worked the farm decided to get drunk and go till a field in the middle of the night. Wound up flipping his tractor into an irrigation ditch and it smashed down on top of him. When the crane lifted the tractor clear and the floods lit up the ditch I couldn't even tell what I was looking at. Just human meat. Through work I saw video of a workplace accident where a bobcat flipped onto an operator, and only his legs were sticking out, Wizard of Oz style. I imagine that when they finally removed it, the scene would be similar, but it was jarring how normal and healthy his legs looked poking out from underneath. I work at registration so I only ever see a select fraction of patients that come in through the doors versus the ambulance entrance. Worst I saw, and it's pretty tame compared to some of the other responses, was a guy who was completely unconscious from an OD and needed 4 nurses to come out to the car where he was and put him on a stretcher and brought him back. All of his flesh looked insanely bloated I did not think he would be okay. Then like I dunno 4ish hours later I see him walk out the door so I guess he was alright in the end. Honorable mention to guy with a saw blade and his leg actively bleeding on the floors and guy who blew his finger off with a firecracker whose son was absolutely pee that he had to bring his dad to the air for that play stupid games win stupid. Prizes in his words. Not medical field but I used to work at a foundry and the first week they overfill the furnace and 4 people had their feet burnt off halfway up to the shins with 5000 degree steel. You could hear them screaming across the whole facility. There's an aluminum foundry near where I live and it was shut down for a few years because apparently no one cleaned out some standing water somewhere and they dumped molten aluminum into it. It caused a huge steam explosion and 2 people were incinerated by the aluminum. My co-worker said he used to work security at the hospital. Guy comes in saying he feels woozy, asks if they have a payphone. He goes over, puts the change in to make a call, and drops dead. Apparently he got shot in the head by a stray bullet and didn't know. We had a 23 yo girl not wearing her seatbelt get partially ejected. Her lower half was outside the car and crushed completely. Hips legs feet all completely crushed and deformed. She came in speaking the last few words about calling her mom and then went unresponsive shortly thereafter. My father was a trauma surgeon. The worst he's seen, apparently, was a man who had his entire foot sucked off. Those were the words he used after he got it caught beneath a moving train. This from a guy who treated gunshot wounds, stabbings, car crashes, burns, snake bites, plus all manner of assorted trauma. You know, had his entire foot sucked off by a moving train is not a phrase I ever thought I would encounter. It's also not one I relish encountering. 
Never worked in one myself, but my mom did when she was younger. She said the craziest thing she saw was when some drunk dude came in at 2am. Apparently he had made a bet he could shove a whole beer bottle up his butt. He lost when the bottle broke halfway up his sphincter. A nurse here. About 2 weeks ago we had a young guy who was in an argument with his partner while off his head on drugs. Ended up stabbing himself in the chest 7 times including once through the heart. Surgeons had to operate while he was in our department and he went into cardiac arrest twice but we were able to bring him back. Ended up transferring him to a specialist trauma hospital but heard that about a week later he died on intensive care. Doctor here. Worst shape I saw in the air was a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. He still had a weak pulse when he arrived but the exit wound had half of his brain just peeking out of it. He didn't last much longer and we called the code not long after. Interestingly, the entrance wound was tiny and barely noticeable. This was one of my first trauma cases in medical school. What I remember most was that he had some of the bluest eyes I have ever seen and he seemed almost hauntingly peaceful. It makes me very sad to think of what emotional turmoil he must have been going through when he pulled the trigger and I feel terrible for what his family must have experienced so close to the Christmas holiday as well. Unconscious 36 year old pregnant female. Found to be a spontaneous uterine hemorrhage at 32 weeks. Emergency c-section in the air itself. I was doing CPR on the mother while they cut the baby out and tried to suture her back up. Mom died in Iku after all. Baby only made it 2 weeks in Niku. Left with blood on my shoes. I just want to say, thank you for being the person to get blood on your shoes. I know it can be a thankless, grilling job. I appreciate you. We had a patient who had some gangrene near a vein caused by needle use. She left the hospital against medical advice before receiving any treatment. Came back a few weeks later and her entire arm was necrotic to the point it looked mummified. She had lost use of it some time ago and was just so high it wasn't a concern until she started getting violently ill. Had to amputate at her shoulder. Probably would have only had to do some skin grafts had she not left in the first place. Not as graphic as some of the others here but I can't believe a person could walk around like that for so long like it was nothing. Don't do drugs kids. I was a security guard at a hospital and we had a patient flown in by helicopter who had been in a motorcycle accident with no helmet. His brain was exposed when we rushed him down to the air we drove the cart and bleeding everywhere. He didn't last long. Not a doctor but worked in an air. Uh, Worst for me personally to witness was a little 2 year old who was brought in by his family, in a car. They ran him in and he was completely limp. His skin was grey and his lips were blue. Grandma and aunt and uncle were watching the kid. He had been vomiting and they laid him down on his back in the crib to sleep. He vomited and asphyxiated. We performed CRP for 30 minutes and care unable to revive him. I remember carrying his little lifeless body from the trauma room to a different room to clean him up for when his parents finally arrived. I don't know what was worse. The mother's wails when she saw her son. Or the look on the grandma's face when she realized her daughter may never forgive her. EMT here. I can honestly say that there is a specific wail people give when their child or partner passes on unexpectedly. It really rattles you. Not a doctor but I'm related to an EMT who responded to a high voltage incident. Guy was trying to get something down from a power line and became part of the power line. Felt N plus featuring after being electrocuted. The EMT told me the smell was like bacon. He was basically cooked inside and out. Guy was aware of what was going on and what happened but his organs began to fail him the next day. He died after a week in the hospital and his power of attorney took him off life support a week later. I actually touched a power line and my friends had to do CPR on me until life flight arrived. I was in a coma for a week. I woke up fully functioning. All the doctors and nurses told my family I had no business being alive. And they had nothing to do with it. I did lose all memories for about a month surrounding the accident. Not a but surgical staff. We got a call about a person with a large infected area but no other information besides the patient being around 500 pounds. We set up the bariatric bed and the standard wound washout pack and wait. Anesthesia calls to say we need all hands on deck and to get peppermint oil ready. We use peppermint oil for cases where the odor will be horrible. To dab on our masks so it's no too intense. Anesthesia and patient and a few transporters due to wait. 
Roll into the room and a horrible smell fills the air. We ask where the wound is and the patient says wounds are all over my groin and stomach. We ask if they know how the wounds came about and response was no. Patient goes to sleep and we remove the gown and blankets to begin. The patient had six huge gaping wounds. Four on stomach and two around groin. The wounds were green and black which meant they've been open for a while. We start irrigating with saline and antibiotics and suddenly maggots start pouring out of the other wounds. The sight and the smell caused myself and two others to start vomiting. We remove some dead skin and irrigate more until the wounds are a fresh pink color and until we saw no more maggots. We pack the wounds and we set up some more procedures for the next few days to get this patient back to normal. Ish. During the next washout, we notice more odor, worse than the day before and it smells like dead bowel. Patient's colon was destroyed and rotting from the infection and the maggots and so much was compromised that at that point there was nothing else we could do besides make this patient comfortable for passing. We found out after patient passed, according to the patient's mom, that patient was on insulin and refused to use new needles every time. So they use the same needle repeatedly in the same couple of spots and has been doing so for over a month before the infection started becoming noticeable and unavoidable. Mom tried to get patients to come to hospital for weeks when she noticed the smell but patient refused until it became the mess that I described earlier. I'm eternally glad I work in a job where I can't recognize a dead bowel by smell. Not a doctor but I'll put up a story, reading all these crazy things makes me want to share. When I was 13 my dad nearly murdered my mom, he used a wrench he had hidden. I was next door at the time than God, and beat her over the head. She ended up biting his thumb off, she passed out and she somehow regained consciousness and left and a neighbor saw her and helped her. They had to bring in the life flight to take her to a level 1. Multiple broken fingers from holding her hands over her head and tons of big dents in her skull. A freaking miracle she's alive and not a vegetable. One of the docs that treated her said he had never seen anything so bad. My dad got sentenced to life. I was subpoenaed and had to testify. With possibility of parole and ended up doing 21 years in max before he was paroled. Gave me a real bad case of PTSD and made me suicidal at one point. I haven't seen or talked to him since he was in prison about 20 years ago. A nurse here. C is often cut with a drug called levamisole. This causes vasculitis and eventual skin death on various parts of the body, especially the face. I took care of a lady that had this condition all over her body. She had been admitted to a burn center a couple of weeks before to treat her dying skin and sent home to recover. She was instructed to change her dressings, apply medication and given everything she needed to recover. After not doing any of these things for two weeks she was brought into our ED by a concerned friend. Her wounds had all gone gangrenous and the bandages had adhered to the burns. The smell. I'll never forget it. We soaked the bandages the best we could and began removing them. She would scream. We'd push more narcotics and we'd continue on. She still screamed. But it was a little less. It took hours to get all the bandages off. Two come to mind. One. Attempted suicide. Probably the best. Survived. Attempt I've seen. He took an overdose. Cut his throat and jumped from a this story balcony and somehow survived. Multiple. Fairly obvious. Fractures all over, pink foam coming from his neck wound and impending drama from his overdose. He survived as far as I'm aware. 2. Sudden cardiac arrest at home. Father of 2. Kids and wife in tow following the ambulance. It was the overall normal way he looked that really got me. You see a lot of crap in ED. T-shirt, PJ shorts and socks that said world's greatest dad. Looked exactly like your dad on any Saturday morning. For some reason this was so much worse than any of the nasty crap. Not a doc but was working the ambulance tridge bay at the trauma center I work in. Rescue pulled up with a dude they were doing CPR on after a car accident. The guy looked like someone forgot about their rotisserie chicken. I could see his radius and ulna. His whole face was crushed in, and during CPR his skin started sliding around under my hand. That's right up there with the 3 year old in a rollover. She was completely grey, we had to crick her to get an airway, pierce a hole in her neck, bilateral chest tubes to suction blood out from around her lungs, and blood shooting up from her lungs when we did the crick. Kid didn't make it, and they found her sister walking down the road with a broken arm and brought her in. 
her and the mom found out what happened, and that the dad was dead on scene. Dude basically had his whole head splattered around the entire car. The girl that survived came in covered in bits of blood, bone, and grey matter. I don't even want to know how that looked. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.